Good morning, virtual villagers, and uh, welcome. This is Kate from What Kate Made. Um, today, we're going to be looking at autumn um, decor for your house. I, I don't know whether you've noticed, but a few sure signs of autumn this morning. Um, for me, anyway, I've got a cold. That's always a sign of autumn. Turn the heat up on the shower. Wore fluffy socks. So, I know autumn's coming. Um, this year, I've decided to make a little display in my porch of various different autumn decor items. And over the next few weeks that I'm on the Village Hall, I'm going to be showing you how to make some of them. Uh, so I'm just going to give you a quick overview of what it is I've made this year. So um, aut my autumn wreath, which I did actually make last year um, and demonstrated for Virtual Village Hall. So I don't know whether they might you might be able to find the videos how to do this. So this is basically a wreath frame here. I've covered it with um, stripy wool, sort of, well, different coloured wools, actually. I'll show you the back. Um, sky, trees, cloud field, green field. So that's basically what it is. I am trying to get your, um, your responses up, but at the moment I can't, and I don't know why. Bear with me a second. There we go. Gotcha. Okay, so I can see your comments. So if you want to comment and say hello, that's fine. So going back to my autumn wreath, I've covered it in yarn. And um, I don't often do them like this now. I quite often use ribbon instead. Now on mine, I have got a couple of needle, some needle felted items. So here, <laughs> the squirrel and the mushroom. And also up here, there's like a sycamore key. In needle felting there is a acorn there and somewhere there's a blackberry there it is so i made those items with needle felting uh, the leaves are all made from felt and i'm going to show you how to make those today as well because i need to make leaves for the other item i'm showing today crocheted leaves um that's about it really i think those are the elements i've got on there so that was the wreath i made last year and that's going back out again this year so that hangs on the door then on the porch, in the porch, I have um, a little table with a twig tree on it. So I made lots and lots of these leaves to go on my twig tree. So it looks like it's got autumn leaves on it. And then round the base of it, this year, I've decided to put um, a selection of other little crafted items. Pumpkins, of which I've made quite a few, and a gnome. So this is my little um, autumn gnome. This one's crocheted, but... If you have got yourself a pair of socks, orange socks, to make today's sock pumpkin, use one and keep the other one. And I will be showing you how to make a gnome, but using a sock instead of crochet. I've also crocheted some pumpkins. Now this one, this is huge. This is made with um, this lovely velvety yarn. I think it's, is it called? Um, I can't remember what it's called. Um, Quite simple to make these if you crochet. You just you crochet a, a long wide band of trebles, but back loop only, so you get this ridge, and then you basically join it into a tube, and then just gather the top and the bottom, and then you pull it in with um, some threads going up and down, which we're going to do on our sock pumpkin. So you'll see how to do that. So that's my crocheted pumpkin, and I've done several of these. That's the biggest one, um, and I've done them in different colours as well. So I've used the cream. You quite often see these white ones now. I've also used orange, obviously, and some green and various different ones. The third one I'm going to sh uh, I've made is this needle felted pumpkin, and I really enjoyed making this. Um, it was e quite easy to make, and I think it looks really effective. Um, on the top of this one, you will see the other things we're adding to our pumpkin. So there's a stalk. I've used um, a coloured pipe cleaner. Leaves. Now, since I discovered these are the wrong leaves. <laughs> the wrong shape leaves for a pumpkin. Pumpkin leaves are more that shape. So I might make that shape instead. And these little um, tendrils that you quite often see on pumpkins, this is made out of wire. And I'll show you how to do that later. So that is my needle felted pumpkin. But the one we're going to make today is this one, the sock pump pumpkin. So um, you might struggle to find orange socks. I actually ended up buying a pair of very long over the knee socks that were meant for Halloween dressing up. But it's great because it means I've got loads and loads of sock to use. And I'll be able to use a bit of it next week, next time to show you the sock norm. So what you'll need to make this today is 
you'll need your sock. So I've cut it, the sock off just where the heel. So the heel would have been here and I've cut it across, straight across like that. So you've got this light. So you don't have to sew the bottom end because it's already sewn up. That's the toe of the sock. And then we'll only need to sew the top end. It's very minimal sewing in this. It's just um, going to be like a gather. So I'm just going to say a few good mornings, uh, Caroline. Oh, Rosa 12 and Davy 10 and going to enjoy this lesson. Well, I hope they make they make one and that you can send us a picture and see because it is very kid friendly. This uh, I'm going to be making it at the end of the month. I'm doing a, a kids craft demonstration live at home at home. And I'm going to be making these as part of that. So anyway, that's your sock. You will also need some orange yarn to make the veins in it. You will need a darning needle. That's a needle with a very wide eye. It doesn't have to be really sharp, but it just has to be wide. You will need a little bit of felt for your leaves. And I think I'm going to go with yellow. You will need some wire for your tendrils. That's optional. Um, you don't always have wire in, but you could use, if you've got pipe cleaning, you could use that. Um, <laughs> something to wrap your wire around. I also use this pencil for dabbing my glue, which is why it's got glue on the end. A pipe cleaner. I've got some um, pliers to cut my wire with. And scissors. And glue. Only a little bit of glue. Um, this is uh, my glue gun. You will also need that tiny bit of sewing thread which I have neglected to put in my kit. So just bear with me one second. So I'm just going to use this cream sewing thread. You can use the big needle with it. You don't need to have a finer needle. Uh, good morning, Nadine. I'm glad you're watching. Right, so to get started, oh, the last thing you'll need. I forgot about toy stuffing to stuff your pumpkin. So that's the first thing we're going to do. If you take your sock, you may want to put in in your sock a little a little bag with some rice in if you want to give it a bit of weight. But I haven't bothered because mine, mine is just sitting on the table. So you want to stuff it fairly well. The sock will stretch. I'm just going to turn the camera down a little bit so you can see better. There we go. So that's your sock. So what I'm going to do is put a layer in the bottom and then put another layer in and see how much I need. So let's, I've got all bits stuck to my fluffiness. Because what you want is to get it, see how mine's quite fat, uh, flat, but round. So that's the sort of what we're aiming for. But you can push it into position once you've got um, your stuffing in. And you're aiming to get the stuffing nearly to the top of the sock. You can always cut a bit of the sock off. I would always err on the side of cutting it longer and then you can, then you can cut it off. You don't have to... Uh, you won't be able to stick it back on again if you cut it too short. So I'm reckoning, that's my sock, it's starting to curl up a bit at the top. But I'm reckoning, if you go like that and then squash it, then you'll see how big it's going to be. It might need a little bit more stuffing. My stuffing I've rescued from out of an old pillow. I quite often do this rather than buying um, toy stuffing because it is um, fire safe because it's obviously been in the pillow. And I like to recycle whenever I can. I think that might be enough. So if I just squash mine, squash it down, you can see how big my pumpkin is going to be. So that's about right. The toe bit wants to be on the bottom just to hide the stitching. Just sort of spread it a little bit so it flattens out and it looks quite round. You can roll it in your hands like that to get it round. Okay, so now we need to thread the needle. Morning, Irene. Irene's a regular viewer. So I'm going to thread up my needle. I normally pre-thread needles because it's painful watching me thread needles. But this has got a big eye, so I can really manage it. Now, I always double my thread up and tie a knot in the end, um, which helps anchor it and makes it a little bit stronger. So I'm going to, I want to gather it 
about there. If you don't want to saw, you can just tie a bit of string around it, but you will need to saw for to make the um the sections in it. So I'm gonna anchor that there. through that's it so I've got my double thread now and then I'm gonna as close to the um stuffing as I can I'm just gonna run a gathering stitch around like that If you pop along to my page, What Kate Made, on Facebook, I'm sure it'll pop up on your screens. You'll um, you'll be able to see what my display looks like outside in the porch because I've put some pictures on today. And I'm going to keep adding to it every time I make something for one of these little demos. I'm going to add it to it. So, so by Halloween, it should look quite, um, quite good. So that's my pumpkin shape basic pumpkin shape so i'm just going to trim this off because we don't want this great big end i have just wrapped the thread around and tightened it a little bit so let me cut this off and you can either leave that or you can tuck it in i'm going to leave mine i think because it's quite attractive now what you need to do now is to pull this together like that and the way we do that so we make it flatter is we take the needle down through the middle to the bottom and then we come back up. So before you um, break your thread off, you want to do this. Pull it back up and then pull it tight. Press it down with your finger and go through again. Do this a couple of times. That will produ produce that dimple that you see in pumpkins. My needle's got stuck now. So you end up with what almost looks like a donut shape and finish at the bottom. If you hold it pressed down with your finger while you put your needle through, that'll help keep the dimple and stop it. It gets more difficult the more you push through, so you might need to give it a little bit of help. And the little ones might need a bit of help from whoever they're with to, to push the needle through. Okay, and then I'm just going to just fasten that off with a bind it with a quick knot. There we go. So that's all the sewing we're going to do with the sewing thread. So now you can see we've got our basic pumpkin shape. So the next thing to do is to create these sections that pumpkins have on the skin. And we're going to do that using our orange um, yarn. This is sort of an orangey, slightly different orange, but I made one of my pumpkins with this yarn, so I quite like it. I think it's called Spice the Colour, which is quite nice. So you want a fairly long bit. I've gone for about 18 inches because it's better to have more than less. So then you thread, this is why you need a big eyed needle, you thread this yarn through. And what I'm going to do is, like I did before, I'm going to start at the bottom. I'm going to come right up from the centre and through that little uh, bit at the top. I'm just going to push it, my needle down to give it a little bit of help because it's now getting quite busy in the bottom of there. Leave a tail because we're going to tie it off with that. Go back through and come up quite close to that tail. And then we'll tie that in a knot. You want it close, but not exactly in the same hole because otherwise when you tie it, it won't um, anchor. And then what we're gonna do is simply go to the middle. Uh, I'm trying to find a place where there's not as much material so it goes through easier. There we go. And you pull it tight and then you come up sort of make sort of like section like that and just keep doing that and pulling it tight oh that's hard 
Yeah, you definitely might need an adult's helper and holding it underneath with your finger helps you to keep the keep it tight. Might just try a different place to put my needle through where there's less fabric. As long as it's sort of vaguely in the center, that'll be fine. That was better. Keep pulling and twist, you got, got moving it around a little bit. Oh dear. Go. Now, Nadine's asking about a video. I don't know whether she means this video or whether she means the Autumn Wreath one. This video will be up on the Virtual Village Hall page for quite a while. So if you want to come back later and do, do it with the kids, for instance, then, yeah, you can do it there. The Autumn Wreath videos, I'm not sure. I'm going to have a look back when I've finished here and hopefully I'll be able to find them and put them on my page. Um, if you if you're interested, if not, look, I can definitely do a do something, a quick uh, tutorial. So once you've done all your sections, your pumpkin looks like that. Now we're going to cut the wool off at the back. So we're nearly done now. So what we need to do now is decorate the top of our pumpkin. So the leaf shape I'm, I've looked, I've found is something like a sycamore leaf. Now that that is out of my leaf co template collection, and that's the sycamore leaf. Um, but they're not quite like that. So I'm going to draw around it, but only roughly around the shape. You'll see what I mean in a minute. So I, as I hate to waste anything, I'm not going to put that right in the corner. So instead of putting all these shapes in, this, by the way, is what's called a friction pen, and it disappears with heat. So you can use it quite safely to draw around. And as you can see, I'm drawing around the leaf, but not putting all those little bumps and indentations in it. So I'm getting a roughly pumpkin shaped leaf. Um, but not as, it won't be quite so difficult to cut out with all the little bits in between. So that's my pumpkin shaped leaf. I'm going to quickly cut that out. I'm only going to put one on this because obviously you don't want to watch me. It might be a bit big actually. Um, just cutting out pumpkin leaves all day. So I'm just going to quickly cut it out. Might, this might be slightly big, so I might, in the end, af after I've done, uh, I'll cut smaller one for it. So there we go. That's my leaf. So that's one leaf. It is a little bit big, but we'll use it. The other thing we need is the stalk, which I'm going to make from um, a pipe cleaner. And what I've done with mine is I've bent it in half, well, bent bent it into two and then twisted it together to make a slightly thicker, more uh, robust um, stalk. And then I'm just going to nip that off with the pliers. You don't need pliers, you can use scissors. Um, I'm going to turn my glue on because I'll need that in a minute. Let that heat up. There's quite a few of you watching this morning. That's nice. So um, the stalk is glued into the middle, but as I say, I'll wait while my glue warms up. So I'll show you how to make the tendrils. So this wire is just brown, it's florist wire and it's brown. It's really handy for um, doing anything to do with foliage. I also use this because it's quite a nice thick one um, when I make, um, when I do needle felting with, so where you need to put a skeleton in it. And this is simple, you just make a spiral. So something, the width of this pencil and just wind it round and round. Now I want two spirals. I don't know whether I've cut enough here to make two, but no, I haven't really. It'll just have to be a long one. So you then just pull it off. It's going to get stuck on that glue. I don't in my pencil. Can't get it off now. I'll go the other way. <laughs> that would make sense. Stuck to the glue. There we go. There's your little spiral. So you just pull it out a little bit. I'll just quickly make another one. And my glue's ready now, so I can. These little spirals, they're like um, tendrils that grow on 
uh, pumpkins like all sort of squash and members of the squash family um, put out tendrils and cling to things so that's how they vine um, I've never grown pumpkins courgettes and cucumbers are very similar in, in that they put these tendrils out so there we go that's our two little tendrils that's our leaf and um, I will show you that these lines disappear because you can just rub them out and um, the heat from the friction from the rubbing makes them disappear or if you draw around with an ordinary pen you can just make sure you cut in, inside the line right we'll leave that because that's, that's red so my pumpkin leaf my tendrils um my stalk and this and I'm going to take my glue gun and I'm going to put a generous dot of glue in the middle and where I um folded I'm just gonna can you see flatten that out so that it sticks better in the glue so that's my stalk I've made that a bit longer a little bit more glue just put my tendrils in the glue will set around the wire if you just leave it um, at the side like that. As long as you put a generous amount. If you're using PVA glue, um, which you can do, you don't have to use hot glue, it will take a little bit longer to set. So um, while it's setting, don't touch it. And then I'm just going to add my leaf. Good morning, Vicky. Good morning, Elaine. So, my leaf, I think I'll put there. So, again, just a little dot of glue, press the leaf onto it. This is a little bit big, that leaf. But there we go. That's your sock pumpkin finished. Very simple to do. You can do them with the children. As I say, I'm going to do it with my kids' um, Halloween workshop that I'm doing at the end of the month. Um, minimal sewing. Lovely. So I'm really pleased with that. So that one will go outside in my porch along with um, all my other pumpkins. So the second thing I'm going to show you um, are the autumn leaves. Now I um, use them, as I said, on my wreath. I have a template um, with all these different leaf shapes on, which I'll put up on my page. So you can visit my page, uh, What Kate Made, Kate's Design and Craft on Facebook. Um, I'm sure they'll put a link up from Virtual Village Hall. And they've also put a link up for the Autumn Read session. So that's really good. Um, so I'm going to show you a few of these leaves because I need more on my tree. My tree is looking a little bare downstairs. Um, I've got several different colours of autumn colours, I felt. Now, this felt I use is very cheap felt. I think it's acrylic. It's thin like paper. But I buy it deliberately for things like these because it's stiff. If you use the more floppy felt, the more sort of better quality, it's too floppy to make leaves. You need something that's a bit stiffer. So I've got these. I've got a few leaf templates here off my um, leaf template uh, sheet. That, as I say, I'll put it up. Um, you see, I've got an ivy leaf there. That would have been better for my pumpkins because it's smaller. I've got long leaves like that. I've got oak leaves. I've got all, they're also in, in larger and smaller sizes as well. Um, there's more of a sort of maple leaf. Um, I'm looking for an oak leaf, but the only one I can see here is massive. Um, and then there's the, the lovely um, sycamore leaf that I used before. I'm just going to quickly draw one round one of these leaves to show. Well, I'm going to do one freehand actually, because I can show you how easy it is to do if you don't have the template. Now you can cut three leaves at once by layering up your felt. Now I'm just gonna do this in a norm, normal leaf shape. So um, I'm gonna draw it onto the felt. I'll move that one out of the way so you can see better. Um, just an oval shape with a point at the top. I'll just lightly draw it on with my friction pen. And then I'm going to cut round all three. So another thing about this felt is it's very thin. So it is easy to cut three leaves at once. 
and then I'm going to cut up from the bottom again. I just find it easier to do, do it that way. So that's your basic leaf shape. Now, when we glue it, we bend it um, like that, and that gives you gives it an actual nice shape. The other thing you can do is cut little notches in so you get um, a bit more variety to your leaves. And, and all of this can be done just freehand, quite simply. Um, again, I'm going to use hot glue. You can use um, PVA glue, but it takes time to set. And you might want something that just holds it, holds it closed while you do it. So maybe a clothes peg or a clip or something, or put a weight on them. So you can see that gives that a little bit more interest. So what we do next is we, I'm going to use a different sort of wire. If I can find it. Again, it's florist wire. You can buy it anywhere. This is a very, very fine silver one. Now, if you're going to put these on a tree, you need this. If you're going to put them on um, a wreath like mine, you might want to put several together to make a kind of spray of leaves. It makes it easier than gluing them all on individually. So I would use a thicker wire. This is, um, again, florist wire. It's green. And you would stick them on like that. And that would make it easier for your wreath than sticking them all on individually. You don't have to be wired for your wreath. You can just stick them on um, as they come. But I'm going to show you how I do this with the thin wire. So I can't remember which was the top and which was the bottom now. That's the bottom. All you do is put a dot of glue on, put your wire in it, and then fold it over. Now, this is where the pencil comes in handy because I always burn myself. I just press it with the pencil. I've only just started doing this. I always say I should do, and then I burn my fingers and I forget. You just need to hold that till it's set. It will seep through this cheap felt. So just be careful that you don't uh, glue it to your table. So I'm just, that's not as hot now. So I'm going to just let that set. And there we go. That's our leaf shape. So I'm going to make lots of these to put my twig tree. My twig tree I made, oh, I've had it. Probably a year ago, Easter, I made it as an Easter tree and every season I change what's on it. Um, so it's, we're into autumn now. The other thing you can do is if you've got one of these um, sort of sycamore type leaves or the oak leaves that don't really have a bend in them, uh, you can, I think I'll use the thin one because these are all going on my tray. You can just put a blob of glue and get the wire right into it and then just let it leave it set so that the, the glue sets around the wire and it will set fairly quickly and um, hot glue sets fairly quickly. So we'll leave that a second or two. So I'm just going to turn you back up. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you've enjoyed this demonstration because as I said, this is just the start of my um set of autumn crafts there's be two or three more broadcasts coming up where i'm going to make other things i'm going to make the gnome with the sock so I'll keep your other sock so if you make a pumpkin keep the other sock out the pair um it doesn't have to be orange it could be any color particularly for the uh the gnome um i'm also going to be making some uh lanterns out of glass jars so now might be the time to save your glass jars they're um bigger the better well it's up to you really um, I tend to make quite a few and put them along my front of my porch. If it's not, if it's a nice night, you can either use um, tea lights in them or anyway. So we will make autumn and Halloween themed um, lanterns as well in this in this se session. Okay, so just to go back over what we've made today, we've made our autumn leaves, which you can either use on your wreath or on your um on a twig tree if you've got one twig trees are dead easy to make you just get twigs and bind them together so you know you might want to make your own um we've also made our sock pumpkin dead easy remember to keep your other sock from your pair of orange socks for your gnome 
And what else did we do? That's it today, I think, isn't it? So I hope you've enjoyed this broadcast. I think I'm a little bit a little bit early, but never mind. Um, I'm not sure when I'm on again, but keep an eye on the Virtual Village Hall page and you'll see it come up. It's a couple of weeks. It's usually a Monday at 11. Not always, but usually. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, just say I've had a few comments. Uh, Joe, Jax, Nadine, Elaine, Lindsay, all saying thank you. Um, hope you've enjoyed it. Lindsay, I hope you've got some crafty ideas. You might want to look back through um, the Village Hall for some, some of my other posts. Or visit my um, Facebook page at What Kate Made, Kate's Design and Craft. Uh, there's all sorts of things on there. You'll find all sorts of videos and ideas on there. And that's me then for today. So I'm going to go and sign off, go and get myself a cup of tea. You enjoy the rest of your day and uh, let me have any pictures of anything you make. That's, that's great. Okay, then. Goodbye. See you soon.